Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of our Agents of Change series, presented by State Farm and SAD. As we celebrate National Distracted Driving Prevention Month, these segments are created to help parents coach their young drivers on their journey to safe driving. Distractions continue to be a leading cause of teen crashes, so we must all do our part to keep teens safe behind the wheel. We're thrilled to have an all-star panel today. Please join me in welcoming our panelists. Sierra Jaime, State Farm agent from California. From the Sunshine State, we have Lexi Goza, State Farm agent from Florida. Coming to us from Pennsylvania, we have State Farm agent Jeff Berthney. Live from Maryland, welcome State Farm agent Tammy Counts. Lastly, we have State Farm agent Bolana Knight Brown from Nevada. Welcome everyone. In this episode, we're talking about common distractions that teens face inside the car. You know the tasks distract a driver from the art and science of driving. I'd be curious to hear what you guys see as agents when it comes to distracted driving. Sierra, let's start with you. Yeah, absolutely. Distracted driving is a thing that happens every single day on the road. And all of us behind the wheel have to be very vigilant to make sure that we're fighting against it. Um, distracted driving is classified pretty much as anything that distracts you from the task at hand, which is driving safely and getting to your destination. Um, so it could be something along the lines of putting makeup on in the car. It could be something of looking around at um, an accident that's happening. It could be texting or looking at your phone. It could be a number of different things. And so we want to make sure that we fight against that um, while we're driving. So then we stay safe. Um, so, for example, I just had a customer of mine that just started driving for Uber Eats um, and very first um, ticket, very first drive um, for Uber Eats. And she was very excited. She picked up the food. She got another notification on her phone, looked down for a split second and parked um, two parked cars um, were right there on the side and she crashed into them. Um, that's a perfect and classic example of some of the dangers of, of uh, distracted driving. That's right, Sierra. So I'd like to also share some other common behaviors that take our hands off the wheel. Of course, we know that driving and technology don't mix. But if we're being honest, we've all done it, right? A text or a call comes in and our eyes are drawn to the cell phone while behind the wheel. So I challenge you, the next time that you're sitting at a stop sign or a stoplight, watch how many other drivers drive by while looking down at their phones. Some of them are even holding it in one of their hands, right? And so we encourage drivers to utilize hands-free technology or to park their phone in the glove box or the trunk somewhere out of reach and out of sight so as not to distract the driver. And that's just building a habit, right? Once you set that habit in place, it's easy. And there's actually now a setting on the Android that allows you to place a do not disturb auto text response while you're driving. So that can be super helpful. And, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why I went into insurance in the first place, because I was a young driver at one point, uh, many years ago, and I actually was distracted driving and caused an accident and didn't have enough coverage in place. And it really financially impacted me. And so um, we're all doing our part to make sure um, that we cut down on distracted driving. And I agree with Lexi. Um, technology can be very distracting. So when we, when we talk about the distracting behaviors, it could be something as simple as a navigation system. And that can be overlooked. You're typing in an address while you're driving and all of a sudden you run into a telephone pole. It happens. Now, another common problem we see amongst teens is grooming. You know, it could be um, you know, putting your makeup on, putting deodorant on. We've heard reports of all types of things when people are driving down the street trying to take care of themselves while they're getting to where they're going. You could even be brushing your teeth. Those things need to be done before you leave the house. So when you get in your car, just make sure you're ready and pay attention to the road in front of you. Absolutely. Jeff, I've even seen someone shaving in their car. It was not a good thing. <laughs> they were weaving all over the place. So yes, all of those things um, are de definitely distracted driving. Um, one thing that I don't think people always think of is eating and drinking. So that is also considered distracted driving. 
Um, you're taking your eyes off the road to look into your bag. You know, let me grab a French fry. Let me pass out the food that's in the, you know, to the passengers that's in the bag. Those are all things you're taking your eyes off the road. Um, even opening a bottle of soda, you're, you need two hands to open a bottle of soda. So your hands aren't on the wheel where they're supposed to be. Um, so really, if you, you know, you think you need to get something to eat, you really need to eat in your car in the parking lot or wait to where you're going. And I actually have a 17 year old who just started driving and um, he's constantly on the go, constantly going through drive through. And, um, and, you know, I tell him the rules are you got to wait till you get home, get to school, wherever you're going, or if you're hungry, if you're starving, you got to eat in the parking lot and then get going. So, um, and another thing that we've, I've seen actually as an agent, we had someone that was eating while they were driving and he started choking and caused an accident. It uh, was a serious accident. He's okay. But these are things that sometimes you don't think about when you're eating and driving. So I completely agree with Tammy. Um, as we approach warmer weather, uh, many of us will be reaching for those sungla sunglasses that somehow always end up winding up on the floor of the passenger seat. Um, and as you're going for those glasses, we're taking our eyes off of the road and our hands off of the wheel. Many studies have shown that as you reach for an object, the vehicle will naturally drive that direction. So again, you're putting yourself at risk and also others at risk. Not just sunglasses, reaching for any object can be dangerous. So park your car safely, gather your item, and wait till you arrive safely. One example that I have of this, unfortunately, is myself. It was many, many years ago, but I was driving to work at night on a highway by myself, brought my phone, thought it would be okay to pick it up. My entire car swerved to the right. Thank goodness I didn't hit anything or anyone, but there was a highway patrol there. So I did get pulled over and get a ticket, unfortunately, whereas I should have waited or pulled over to the side of the road. Right. Those are all excellent points and great examples of distractions that can take our hands off of the wheel. But what about our eyes and our mind? I'm sure there are common distractions in these categories as well. There's a classic phrase that's called rubbernecking. Um, so some of us may not know what the phrase means, but I'm from California. And even though I live in a small town, everybody knows about the classic LA traffic scenario. Oftentimes LA traffic is, um, is uh, complicated because there's an accident that happens. And then of course, everyone that's on the road around there is very curious to see what happened and slows down to be able to see and investigate. That is a classic example of unsafe driving habits. Um, and it oftentimes, um, it oftentimes creates um, a situation that not only is unsafe for yourself, but for the other drivers that are around you. And we want to avoid that. That's so true. I mean, that I think causes most of the backups that I see here in Miami as well. So I totally agree. Um, the next thing I'd like to mention is one of my favorite things to do in the car, actually. So, you know, we all love to sing in the car and we all have the best jams, especially as the weather finally gets nicer. So this is literally my favorite thing to do. Just get in the car and drive and blast my music. I call myself a shameless car singer, right? However, music can be a distraction. So, you know, whether you're changing the playlist, changing the station, or just singing aloud, out loud alone or with friends, these tasks may not always take your hands off the wheel, but they definitely take your mind off of driving, right? Especially during those air drum and air guitar solos. There are apps that can help you be more mindful about staying alert and aware while driving, including our Steer Clear and Drive Safe and Save apps. And you know, Lexi, the other thing that we do as drivers a lot is daydream. That time when you leave work or school and you get home and you just don't know how you got there, but you know you drove there. And as Bailey said, it may seem harmless when you're doing other things in the car, but it takes your mind off what's important, and that's driving the vehicle where it belongs. So it's essential that when you get in the car, you want to have some sort of a routine where you're checking the mirrors, hands on the wheel, paying attention to what's in front of you, because that's where you're headed. And if you're on a long drive or by yourself, you always want to make sure that you take the time to pay attention to where you're going and try not to lose focus on the road. 
That's a really great point, Jeff. Um, daydreaming is definitely a problem, especially for teens. They're thinking about all the things that they might be thinking about their test and all the other things that they have going on in their life. Um, but you can also start drifting off um, because you're tired. So teens, we know that teens don't always get um, enough sleep and um, that can cause distracted driving as well if you're sleepy. So if you feel like you're really starting to drift off, you definitely need to pull over, um, you know, maybe get out of the car, wake yourself up, get something to drink, but there's been definitely plenty of accidents accent where people actually fall asleep. So be careful with that too. So great point, Tammy. Um, let's not forget about passengers. Each friend in the car is a distraction by definition. They too take our minds off of driving. Teens must set rules for their vehicles and ensure that their passengers display behavior that keeps everyone safe inside the car. 100%. We've talked about teens, but what about parents? What can parents do to help establish these behaviors in their teens? You know, I think that parents can significantly impact this as they're the ones teaching oftentimes um, their children to drive. And as they're doing that, talk often, talk early, um, enforce these safe uh, driving habits. Um, and you can even use um, tools such as simple insights from State Farm um, on the State Farm website to be able to include and supplement these conversations. Um, the conversation really should include why these things are not safe and how to prevent them um, and how to develop good habits for um, driving in the future. We also want to make sure that how to handle these situations when you realize that you're driving um, and you're distracted or you start to veer off into the other lane, um, that all of that is also um, discussed as well. What I do is I recommend that the parents bring their young drivers into my office and I help to enforce that as a state firm agent and encourage those safe driving habits with my customers as well. That's a great strategy, Sierra. So, you know, a lot of times your kids um, don't always listen to you, but as soon as they hear it from somebody else, it's like golden, right? So um, having the conversation is essential, but parents must also walk the walk too. So in elementary school, our kiddos are watching what we do behind the wheel from an early age. So even when you think they're not paying attention, they are watching. And then they model the behaviors that they see in us um, and other adults and even their siblings. So we wanna make sure that every example that they're seeing is someone who's being safe on the road and not being distracted by uh, cell phones and other things. I agree with you 100%, Lexi. We have to do better at modeling so our kids do see the right behaviors behind the wheel. But as parents, we also need to know and enforce the graduated driver's uh, licensing laws in each state, which is also known as the GDL. It, that's going to help expose the teens and young drivers to the road and to limit distractions like passengers and technology. And it's very important for all parents to know these laws and to work with their children on those. Yes, I totally agree. I run into parents all the time. They're asking me about the GDL laws and, you know, I have to kind of go over it with them, even though it's in the driving handbook, they just, they do need to kind of have that reinforced and sometimes help them remember what the laws are. Um, but also the parents do need to um, really enforce the rules of the GDL. No passengers um, in, after, until six months, five or six months, depending on your state, no technology, and just really like, like has been said before, to model good behaviors. Um, I know with our son, we actually did um, we drew up a driving contract that we actually just got online and tailored it to ourselves. We had him sign it. We signed it. We each have a copy and um, it just kind of goes over, you know, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, and then what the consequences are if, um, if any of the rules are broken. He knows it's our car and uh, we have, he might be driving it, but we have the, the power. 
That's awesome, Tammy. I love that you put that in place, the contract. I, I, I need to use that idea. Um, and I because I think it is important that we do talk about consequences with our children, not just the good side, but that there's consequences as well. And as insurance agent, that's definitely part of something that we highlight um, in, in a way that we do that is with rate increases as for teen drivers. Um, we offer some really good discounts if um, the teen drivers do not have any tickets or accidents on their records. So um, we definitely want them to be aware that when they're distracted, there's consequences to those distractions. Um, but before it comes to that, we can set expectations and consequences at home, like Tammy said, which is awesome. Um, so don't be afraid to ride with your teens as parents so you can see how they handle different situations. Um, maybe have, talk to them about how they handle those situations and uh, what they did well, what they maybe could do better uh, later. Um, and that also means as parents um, that we, we have to help our teens. We have to help them understand what those consequences can and cannot be. Um, one great idea is maybe as a parent, not putting pressure on your teen to text you while they're driving, not creating an environment where they feel like if you text them that they have to text you back. So just having conversation. I know one thing I do with my daughter is um, we set parameters. So if I know she's going somewhere, hey, I expect to text by this time, by the time you get there, just so that I know you made it safe, so that I know you're there and you're part and you're safe. Absolutely. That's a great strategy. As always, panelists, you've given us a lot to think about today. As we wrap up, I'd be curious, what is one piece of advice that you would give to teen drivers as they fight to stay distraction-free behind the wheel? So one of the things that I think is the very most important is being intentional with setting habits. All of us as drivers, but especially new drivers, need to be very intentional about what kind of habits do I want to set up? And as you practice these habits and as you practice these safe driving um, habits, then you will get better and better at them, just like any other habit. And oftentimes, even after you've been driving for a while, you need to put yourself in check and remind yourself to have the discipline to stick to the safety um, or stick to um, keeping things safe behind the wheel. Um, so then you can always make sure that not only your life is as safe as possible, but all of those that are around you. I agree wholeheartedly, Sierra. It's so important to um, set good habits. And so the other thing that I would suggest is just utilizing the technology that we have available to us, right? I say all the time that we're living in the future. <laughs> and um, I feel it every single day. So we have apps for everything that we need to do. You know, in this day and age, you plug something in on your phone and 15 minutes later, you have a full meal at your door. You don't even have to go anywhere. So um, definitely take advantage of the apps that we have at State Farm, including Steer Clear, which is a complete study program to encourage teens to drive safer and know the laws of the road, um, and also provides a discount. And then also our Drive Safe and Save app, which actually um, can provide real-time feedback on your trips um, to remind you of things like braking too soon or taking a turn too fast and also phone usage um, also shows up there. And so it's a really just a good way to, as Sierra said, keep reminding yourself um, and do that check-in with yourself to make sure that you're not slipping into um, old habits of utilizing the phone while you're driving. Those are great tips, Lexi. Um, I have two. One, I want to see all you young drivers getting good grades so we can keep the discounts on your policies. I think all of the agents are going to agree. If you're getting a 3.0 or better, you're getting one heck of a rate with State Farm. But second, take your cell phone, put it in the back seat, leave it there until you get where you're going, and just drive safe. That's a great point, Jeff. I don't think we mentioned the, um, the grades, but that is a great discount, and it's a great tip for our teen drivers. Uh, my tip would be that we all know that teens are super busy and they're masters of multitasking, but, and sometimes it's encouraged, but multitasking while you're driving is not a good idea. That's not the time to multitask. So um, I always tell my son, you know, leave early, plan ahead, don't be rushed when you're driving and just kind of relax and enjoy the ride. Um, and, you know, have a nice smooth ride wherever you're going. 
Those are all amazing tips. Uh, the one that I thought of is peer pressure. I know that as a teen driver, there can be a lot of peer pressure from your friends on when you should drive, when you should not drive, how you should drive, listening to music, et cetera, habits in the vehicle. Uh, one thing in our household was my daughter was not ready to drive at 16, 17, or 18 years old. And we didn't put any pressure on her. Um, and we had conversations with her about what was being said to her by uh, her friends or just other people around her. So not having that pressure to drive until you're actually ready to be behind the wheel. Those are great tips all around. I again want to thank our esteemed panel from State Farm, our true agents of change. I also want to thank you, Sad Nation, our followers, for helping us share the rules of the road as we celebrate National Distracted Driving Prevention Month. That's all the time we have for now. Be safe every trip, every time.